Welcome to the second part of our lecture on the female reproductive tract, particularly the reproductive tract of a cow. So again, this presentation was adapted from the uh, presentation of Dr. John Parrish, no, a professor from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, from his lecture on the reproductive physiology of the female animal. So our previous lecture focused on the ovary. The ovary is considered to be the uh, primary you know, sex organ of the female animal. So let's now proceed to the secondary sex organ. So this is a series of tubes that convey the oocyte, the embryo or the fetus, to the outside. So under this, you now we have, uh, for example, we have the oviduct, we have the uterus, the cervix, the vagina, and the external genitalia. So this diagram here shows the layers of the secondary sex organ, the typical uh, layers that can be found in the cross section of a uh, the secondary sex organ or the tube, the tubular structure of the female reproductive tract. So from the outside, of course, we have the serosa no, or the tunica serosa, then it is followed by the mus muscle layer. Uh, the tunica muscularis and on the inside we have the uh, submucosa and the mucosa and the lumen for the uh, muscularis or the muscle layer of course we have the uh, the outer part which is uh, made up of longitudinal smooth muscle layer you know, and the inner part of that under that is the circular smooth muscle Let's start our discussion with the oviduct. So the oviducts are the functional links between the ovary and the uterus. The oviduct is also the site of fertilization. It's, it also functions to transport the gamete. Uh, when we say gamete, that refers to the sperm in the oocyte. Again, this is a site of fertilization, so it has a role you know, in the transport of this uh, sperm and oocyte. It also supports early embryonic development and it transports the embryo to the uterus. So this diagram here represents the structure that can be found in the oviduct. So the oviduct is divided into a number of parts. Now, so starting at the end, uh, closest to the ovary, the parts are, so we have here the infundibulum, we have the ampulla, and uh, we also have the ampullary ismic junction, the ismus, and the uh, uterotubal junction. So starting with the infundibulum. So this is the infundibulum. And this is the funnel shape end of the oviduct. And the edges of the funnel, we have finger-like projections that are called as fembria or fembrae uh, when it is plural. So at ovulation, the fembria and the infundibulum will catch the ovulated egg and transport it to the base of the infundibulum through the ostium and into the ampulla. So the second part of the oviduct is the ampulla. It, is, uh, it comprises about one half of the length of the oviduct. And in terms of its mucosa, it is highly convoluted and well developed. It feels soft to the touch and its diameter is larger than the other part which is the isthmus. So this is the cross section of the ampulla showing its uh, mucosa and again it is highly convoluted and in terms of its texture it is soft to the touch and when we are going to compare that now with the other part of the oviduct which is the isthmus so it is considered to be a softer you know, in structure compared to the isthmus. The next part is the junction between the ampulla and the isthmus, and that is known as the ampullary ismic junction, as shown in this uh, diagram. This is about midway between the ovary and the uterus. Now, it is approximately the site at which fertilization occurs. So, in the oviduct, it is again the, fertil the fertilization occurs in the oviduct. Specifically, in most domestic animals, it occurs at the ampullary ismic junction. Um, after this, we have the isthmus. So the, um, the isthmus, you know, in terms of its um, mucosa, you know, it is also convoluted. The muscularis is considered to be well-developed, as shown in this diagram. 
uh, which gives the isthmus a hard feel you know, when touch in when when touched you know on the external side you no know, it is uh, hard because it has a well developed muscle layer so after the isthmus we have the uterotubal junction this is the transition between the uterus and the oviduct so in cross section the oviduct has three layers as the uh, we have the serosa the muscularis and the mucosa so again uh, these are the different parts of the oviduct now from the ovary we have the uh, we have the infundibulum the ampulla the ampullary ismic junction the isthmus and the uterotubal junction again the major site of fertilization is the ampullary ismic junction we also have here you know, a diagram of the oviduct showing the different parts and in this portion in this specimen we have here the ampulla not the ampulla and we have this is the isthmus so uh, in between the ampulla and the isthmus is the uh, ampullary ismic junction and uh, this part here you know, represents the uh, uterotubal junction which is the a structure that uh, is a transition between the oviduct and the uterus. So this part here you now represents the uterine horn, and uh, we have here the mesosalpins, you know, which is a structure, the broad ligament, the part of the broad ligament that supports the oviduct. So this uh, portion here, this uh, uh, photo, you now represents the uh, fembria. No. The fembria of the uh, oviduct. No, we have here the ostium of the oviduct. So it is an opening whereby uh, it is where you know, the ova will uh, migrate you know, after ovulation. So it will enter you know, the ostium towards the, of course, the infundibulum and towards the uh, the structure you know, known as the uh, ampulla. So this is here, you know, the, this is the ampulla. It is where the ova will be transported towards the um, ampullary you know, ismic junction, where is the, the usual site of fertilization. So uh, let's now proceed to the uterus. So the most important function of the uterus is that it will provide a suitable environment for embryos and uh, embryos and for the fetal growth, growth throughout pregnancy. The uterus is also important for muscle contractions, so it facilitates the transport of the sperm to its uh, fertilization site, the oviduct. And uh, during uh, farrowing or during parturition, it is important for the expulsion of the fetus and also you know, the expulsion of the placenta after parturition. It is also important for absorption in phagocytosis. So the phagocytosis is um, considered to be um, a non-specific defense mechanism of the uterus. It also partially prepares the sperm for fertilization, and that is known as sperm capacitation. So again, when we say sperm capacitation, it refers to the physiological changes that the spermatozoa must undergo in order to have the ability to penetrate the, to penetrate and also fertilize the ova. So another important function of um, the uterus is its endocrine function. It is responsible for the production of the prostaglandin F2 alpha, which is again important for uh, the lutelytic, lutelytic function or the regression of the corpus luteum. In terms of the type of the uterus, so cow has a bicornuate type of uterus. It has a poorly to moderately developed uterine horn, and um, we have also have the uterine body and one cervix. So these are the parts of a uterus. Now we have here the body and the uterine horn. So at the in between, we have here the bifurcation of the uterus. So in bovine. The uterus is considered to be, uh, particularly the horn, is poorly to moderately developed and it has no, um, a well-developed uterine body. One of the structures that can be found in the uterus is the caruncles. 
no, this serves as the um, metal attachment to form no, the placenta, no, forming the placenta. And uh, in this figure, we also have here the uh, the different layers of the uterus. Now we have the uh, perimetrium representing the tunica serosa. We also have here in between, we have the myometrium and the uh, on the mucosa layer, we have here the endometrium. This uh, portion here represents the uterine histology. Uh, so in cross-section, the uterus has the same basic three layers as the oviduct, serosa, muscularis, and mucosa. But in the uterus, these layers have special names. So again, uh, the serosa represents the perimetrium, no? the perimetrium or the outermost layer. The muscularis, Will become the myometrium it is termed as myometrium in the uterus and the mucosa represents the endometrium so these are the endometrial glands that can be found within the endometrium this is another representation of the uterine histology showing the three major layers of the uterus we have the perimetrium on the outermost layer that is uh, continuous with the broad ligament. We also have the myometrium. Um, the myometrium has, of course, um, the thick inner circular layer, the uh, thinner outer longitudinal layer. And uh, we also have the endometrium. Of course, the endometrium is the innermost layer of the uterus. It has many simple tubular uh, glands whose secretions create a special environment in the uterus that is conducive for the development of the embryo. So in the cows and ewes, there are prominent structures on the endometrium, and that is known as the coracles. These serve as a site of attachment of the cotyledons of the embryo and are the main areas of exchange between the mother and the fetus. So these structures here, you know, the coracles are found in the uterus, the lining of the uterus particularly in the mucosa, mucosa layer. And uh, we have here another representation between the caruncles and the cotyledons. So this portion here is the uterine lining. We have the caruncles. And this portion here represents the cotyledon. Um, together, the cotyledon and the caruncles represents the placentome. So the cotyledon is the fetal uh, side of the placenta. The caruncle, on the other hand, is the maternal side of the placenta. The placentome is the cotyledon and caruncle together. This is another a schematic diagram of the caruncles and the placentome. So this portion here you know, represents the uterus. No? And this is the maternal side of the placenta. So this is the caruncle. caruncle. And this portion here... No, on the other side represents the fetal side, and that is the cotyledon. Together, it is known as the placentome. Let's now proceed to the cervix. The cervix is a thick-walled, sphincter-like structure that separates the external environment. Uh, when we say external environment, it refers to the vagina in the outside environment from the internal environment of the uterus. So during pregnancy, the cervix is filled with a thick mucus secretion known as the cervical plug. This provides a physical barrier between the vagina and the uterus in order to protect the placental structures and the developing fetus. So the cervix also functions to transport the sperm you know, for uh, fertilization. It also serves as a barrier to the sperm, reservoir for sperm, blocking bacterial invasion during pregnancy, uh, through the cervical plug and serves as a birth canal during parturition. This is the, the cervix of the cow showing the, uh, of course we have here you know, the internal cervical os. The, uh, this is the opening you know, between the uterus, uterine body and the cervix. And uh, we also have here the external cervical os you know, between the cervix and the vagina. So the cervix is composed of thick connective tissue and it is said that the mucus is secreted near the time of breeding and ovulation. So 
the cervix of the cow has annular rings. So internally, uh, it has uh, opposing ridges. And these are known as the annular rings or the annular folds. And uh, the cervix is a denser structure compared to the other parts of the reproductive tract because uh, it contains more connective tissue. For cows, uh, the cervix is often described as a turkey kidney. Turkey kidney feel when palpated. It has a thick wall and a small opening for the cervical os. The cervix softens and relaxes around the time of estrus, the period of sexual receptivity. Cervical softening will allow a passageway for sperm at mating and also for the expulsion of the fetus at birth. So during pregnancy, the cervix is filled with a thick mucous secretion known as a cervical plug. This will provide a barrier between the vagina and the uterus in order to protect the placenta structures and the developing embryo. So uh, one of the, again, these are the major uh, identifying structures of the uterine ut uh, cervix. We have the presence of the annular rings, 4 to 5, in the cow. So these, these are the structures that, that can be found in the uh, specimen of the uh, cervix of the cow. So this is the, this portion here represents the uterine body. We have here the internal cervical os, uh, the cervical rings, uh, the cervical rings and the uh, external cervical os. This is the vagina, the fornix of the vagina. So this is another representation of the external cervical os of the cow you know, showing here. You know, again, pag, when we say os, that is an opening. This is uh, external cervical os is between the cervix and the vagina. So this portion here you know, represents the vagina. And this uh, pouch here represents the fornix, fornix of the vagina. The vagina serves as a receptacle for the male's penis during natural mating. In natural mating, the semen is deposited in the vagina near the cervix. In AI, a catheter is inserted in the vagina and manipulated through the cervix, allowing a smaller number of sperm cells to be deposited on the uterine side of the cervix. Um, we also have here you know, the other functions of the vagina. So of course, it serves as a copulatory organ. Uh, the glands secrete lubrication. It also serves as a birth canal and it also secrete pheromones. This is a representation of the histology of the vagina showing the difference between the anterior and the posterior vagina. So this uh, middle portion here you know, represents the sphincter, you know, the vulvo uh, vaginal sphincter. Um, when we say posterior vagina, it also refers to the vestibule. So in the anterior vagina, you can see here that the, the types of cells are columnar. It has a columnar type of epithelium. And in, in the posterior vagina or the vestibule, the cells are made up of a stratified squamous epithelium. Again, this is the histology of the posterior vagina uh, showing you know, the presence of a stratified squamous epithelium on its uh, mucosal layer. So stratified squamous epithelium. The external genitalia. Um, so some of the structures that can be found are the clitoris. So the clitoris is the, the female's analog of the penis. It is positioned at the ventral surface of the posterior vagina. The vulva, which is the external opening of the reproductive tract, consists of both the labia, labia majora, which is analogous to the scrotum of the male, and the labia minora. So this is the external genitalia of the cow, now showing some important structures that are in arrow. Uh, this is the vulva, now showing the labia and the clitoris. So here, you know, the structure of the uh, vagina, urethra, and the vestibule. So again, when we say vestibule, that is a part of the reproductive tract shared with the urinary system. So this part here is the vagina. This is the vestibule for the posterior vagina. And uh, also we have here you know, the subureteral diverticulum, 
within opening of the urethra. So this portion here is the clitoris and this portion here represents the uh, vestibular glands. You also have here the sphincter muscle and the pulpo vaginal sphincter muscle. So we have here a review question. So what are the key components that ensure the bovine has only one or at most two calves? So uh, what are the key components that ensure the bovine has only one or at most two calves? So the first uh, important reason why the calves will the, the cow will only calve one or at most two calves is that the ovary will only ovulate one or at most two oocytes at a time. So uh, um, for every uh, estrous cycle, the ovary of a cow will only ovulate one or at most two oocytes. Next is the uterus is not large enough to handle more than one or two calves as they feel an entire horn each. So this is another, another reason. So it means that the structure of the uterus will, only, will also influence you know, the number of uh, offspring or the fetus that will, that the, the dam you know, is capable of uh, developing in its reproductive tract. 